Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you And welcome back to the Beat Up Plan as we're doing another little bit of Hearthstone. Loyal viewers of mine may have noticed that there has been a slight change or two towards the setup of this video. First of all, there should be a 180p option now on YouTube, because I have a new computer, new processor, and what have you not, which should make this all much better. Don't have a better webcam though, but hopefully still with the better processor, there will be less stuttering at least. Secondly, my portrait is once again moved, and now I'm in the lower right corner, right above my money count, which I'm looking at, because I also have a double screen setup, but sorry. Yeah. It's over there. Why would I do that? Well, there's a reason for that. But before we go into that, it's time to discuss today's topic. With the expansion Journey to Anguro, quite a few decks require you to have at least a legendary. Whether it be a quest, or for instance, as crazy as four legendaries for Midrange Paladin. With Sunkeeper Terum, and Tyrion Fortring, Ragnaros the Light Lord, and Burn Bristle. So Burn Storm Bristle, something like that. The free mana 2 2 Divine Shields, Taunt, and that heals you for every damage he does. Yeah, that is a lot of legendaries. And some of you may be like me. We just don't have all that dust to create everything or what have you not. You, you can't expect that from us. But. There is a shining light within the Hearthstone community, and he is called Midrange Hunter. This particular Midrange Hunter deck requires just a little bit over 1000 dust to create. And there are a few variations, but the one I will show you today is my particular version. And, well, let's just go into it, shall we? And then I'll immediately show you the newest little gizmo that I have in store for you. A gizmo that causes me to have the setup and voila, there are the new stats. This is my mid-range hunter deck. And you can see already from the very start that I'm gonna go, go second. This is a Hearthstone deck tracker and hopefully it will allow us to have all the more control over the battlefields. I can be quite positive that we will have that. I'm gonna assume... Oh, he's hovering over left. Don, this may actually be... Pirate Warrior. And I would like to keep Nesting Rock. Okay, this may go bad, because... This is mid-range, Hunter. And mid-range has some difficulty with aggression. Let's see if we can still make it. No, it actually is quest. Alright, I was wrong, because he was hovering over it. Yes, but there's a lot of new features added here, and that's all for your watching entertainment. Oh, alright. Now, I said there are... This is my version, but what is so special about my version? Well, it includes Explosive Trap. A lot of people have here, for instance, Galaka Crawler. Indeed, that would have been wonderful against the Pirate Warrior, because it eats a pirate. And afterwards... Big attack? Not attack. Probably gonna go with this deck. Not exactly what I'd hoped for. Uh, I, perhaps I even should have waited with using that and just wait until I needed a poisonous uh, adaptation to kill a big taunt. Anyways. Galaka Crawler is a 2 mana 2 3 card that allows you to eat a pirate and gain plus 1 plus 1. It's awesome, in that sense. But, for my particular taste, I have the feeling that Galaka Crawler... Whoa. whoa, 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 I have the feeling that you don't see enough pirate warrior anymore to warrant it. I have to admit though, adding explosive trap removes a beast from Hunter, and thus it is will be harder to activate, for instance, Nesting Rock. So for that matter, it is... worse. However, it has also given me a quite a few wins, simply because no one expects a Galaka. No one expects this type of setup anymore. Um... 
There are a few ways I can handle this. I could improve this guy. Oh, yeah, I still have to remove that. But it is fun, perhaps, to see that Kindly Grandmother has actually has an extra line. Goodness, what a bundle drool you have. Uh, normally you don't see that that often. I could also play down the Hunter Mark is what I'm considering. Yeah, I'm gonna do that because this thing tends to get Hunter a ton of armor and I don't want that. So I'm gonna remove it. And in this way, Nesting Rock now is enabled. The problem with Explosive Trap is actually versus Quest Hunter. They don't really attack face that often, so they won't trigger it. However, it is marvelous against, for instance, Token Druid. That causes them to explode, and if you're lucky, it will actually give you an extra charge of your Eagle Horn Bow, which, to be honest, kind of important. In the sense that, um, a free mana free 2 is much worse than the bloody axel. Alright. Uh, this warrior makes good use of his. Uh... Oh, I have to play this. Makes good use of his resources. But a 6-5 can contend against a lot of the other ones. Oh, there's gonna go and execute. But he is running out of cards he had at the beginning, so I have the feeling we have a chance for this. And yes, I haven't gone up against this war warrior against Warrior at all, with this deck tracker on, which is why you will see on the top here, zero, zero, zero percent. Ah, that's annoying. For sure. Um, even more so, because I can't really, really kill it properly. Mm, now I can. But I am gonna coin out also the bow. I don't really wanna threaten this guy. If we get, for instance, another Savannah High Main or a Nesting Rock, they can immediately attack, for instance. And this way, I keep a little bit more power on the board. Ah. Uh, yeah, this, this little game is not going well. Princess Unleash the Hounds isn't very good against Quest Warrior. They don't tend to have a lot of creatures on the board. And I don't have a lot of draw in this deck. And we have two kill commands, however. And he is getting low, but... The menagerie is for guests. Ah. That is not what I wanted to see. Let the pain speak to me. There's a kill command. But if I use that now. We won't be able to kill him next turn anyways. Um, well, unless he's an idiot. Or an idiot. If he attacks me now, right? He gets two extra damage. He'll be on seven. This and... Well, let's do it like this. Also, we'll be able to kill the Curator in this case. I can wait longer. Wow! Did he know this was explosive traps? Astounding. Well, that sucks. Unless we can kill command, I think we've lost. Let me think here. 
We can punch through this. Do three additional damage. No. No, we win. We actually have enough, and we still had animal companions to do it again. But voila! There is Midrange Hunter beating the big ass old drum even, which he used magnificently to trigger and do a lot of damage to my face. But the shining light of Midrange Hunter, by the way, this should actually be free one. I deactivated it by accident. I also won of a priest, which this deck is awesome against. Why? Well, Nest and Rock for attack creature. Hellmaster for attack creature. Uh, there's a good chance that your sc scavenging hyena will become at least a 4 attack creature for a while. There is enough creatures here that you want to target with, for instance, Power, Death, Sylvain, and Hyman, that you still get a lot of creatures. So, yes, mid-range hunter. I personally love it. We've seen here all the things. He played three legendaries. I have no legendaries. He got destroyed. Alright, he goes second. It's good to know. Rexa versus Teranda. Now let's hope I don't eat my uh, words here. Hmm? I let's said it was wonderful against Priest, again. let's do it. Explosive Trap, once again, know what to do. This is bad against Priest. Don't use it. But also, Galaka Crawler wouldn't have been very good against Priest. Then again, it would have given me a creature, I admit. So, probably Galaka Crawler would have been a little bit better here. Another alternative, how, oh, by the way, would be Ravenous Runt. Which will adapt if you have two creatures. So that's also pretty darn nice. Alright, we get a little bit of a lead weight. Let's see what we're gonna play here. Just pick this up. Got like a crawler. We could play down this guy. He becomes a... This is crazy, I know. But this is a lot of tempo. And the 4-3 is really deadly annoying to him. Crystals! Fresh from Kazakis. Hmm. Our uh, Kylie Grandmother gives us another way to sacrifice a creature and boost scavenging hyena. Alright. Oh dear, this is gonna be really pumped. You wish to live forever? Yes, I see. Uh, but we can definitely kill this. In several ways. And that's, like, more what I'm considering. What is the best way to kill this? Because I like to keep scavenging Aina around if I could. I see already a way. Removes a little bit of power. And I'm gonna go that way, so I'm gonna go with Animal Companion. Another four attack creature, just like Huffer, by the way. Oh dear, run away. <laughs> this does expose scavenging hyena to power or death. I am aware, but right now, I'm okay with that if he does a power or death. Ah, holy no! Good answer. I'm actually going to play Nesting Rock because I already have a taunt and it's another 4 attack creature which is hard to remove. And don't forget we have currently 10 damage out of hand. Once upon a time. Ooh, dragons. <laughs> So let's see here. 8 damage. 10 damage. We have 20 damage. We're just short of killing the priest. Hmm. 
We're just shy of killing her. I do want to set up the kill. So this is gonna go face. Do I want to take it out? What what do we need to win? Well, we currently have deadly damage on board, but... We could go all face. If I leave this up, doesn't matter. No, I don't think so. We're gonna go all face. And as I assume there will come an extra creature onto the board, I am... Waiting with Unleash the Hounds. Because the extra two damage is not going to aid me enough. Why is Sacrifice? I wonder. He could have kept the one free. This looks dead to me. Yes! As I said, this deck is awesome. Well played. Against Priest. It is finished. You win. Voila! Couldn't even do anything, and it is... What was it? I'm trying to look at the mana here, but I think it was turn 8. 7-8, it tends to be more or less... In this stage in game of Hearthstone, when a game is over. If you don't have a lot of dust, this is a deck that really performs well. And once again, just to make sure that I've made the point clear, uh, mid-range hunter over here. Some people prefer, by the way, to put a Fury Bat in uh, as a first drop in comparison to, for instance, uh, a two drop in for Explosive Trap. That is a possibility that is uh, the same price-wise. You could, for instance, do a Ravenous Runt. The, the advantage of Ravenous Runt... Oh, sorry, skip by it. Oh, sorry, Ravasaur Runt. Is that if you have two means, and that's quite possible with Alley Cat, for instance, as an opening, or with Jewel Macaw fetching you something, this guy could become even more powerful than a Galaka Crawler. Because a Galaka Crawler does need a pirate to eat in order to become all-powerful, this guy. And Ravenous Runt, a 2-5 or 3-4, that's about the same. But Divide Shield or Poisonous, or even plus 3 attack, can do wonders at the right moment. So, more or less this card here, the Explosive Trap, Galaka Crawler, Ravenous Runt, Fairy Bat, it's a little bit of the, um, well, your flavor, if you wish. That is a card that I definitely would say is a, is a card that you can switch out. Now, if... Uh, for instance, I, I would never remove Eagle Horn Bone, by the way, even if you remove Explosive Trap, even if you remove this combination. Because it can allow you to punch through and let your creature survive, and you don't have deck... You don't have a draw mechanic in, the, in this deck, which could be something you uh, dislike. In that case, I would say remove, for instance, Nesting Rock, and consider, for instance, Cult Master, also at 4 attack, keeps the same uh, problems for uh, a priest. It does allow you to do a lot of card draw in combination with Unleash the Hounds. Another possibility, by the way, for uh, the 2-drop, and do remind that Cult Master has only 2 health, and that can do a lot of damage, is the old combo with Knife Juggler. But then, yeah, if you, if you do that, Knife Juggler for Nesting Rock, and you remove Explosive Trap for, uh, for instance, uh, very bad. You get a little bit more aggro-focused hunter, which could be your thing. In that case, however, Tuner Rider also loses a little bit of, his, of its power, because Tuner Rider plus Nesting Rock, I've done some nasty stuff with that. But yeah, um, this is Midrange Hunter. There is, by the way, another deck without any uh, legendary in it. That's Midlock. It doesn't really... Uh, I call it Midlock. Uh... It's still tricky, and I don't... I, I personally have the feeling I'm not as good with this deck, or the deck doesn't perform as well as the, the Hunter. It has a little bit of the things that, um, well, you would expect from a Lakari Sacrifice deck to be in there, but 
Well, it has also different elementals which I wish would actually be in the Lakari Sacrifice deck. Why can not the sacrificing by eating your own minion be part of the Lakari Sacrifice quest, right? I mean, it, you sacrifice your creature in order to adapt this guy. If that would have been added to actually Lakari Sacrifice, I think it would have been much better. But I'm starting to rant. It also has the feeling to do with the fact that I am quite ill, and I don't know if you can hear by my voice, but I really need to take my medicine. I'm so sorry for that. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed with the new 180p. I hope you enjoyed this lovely mid-range hunter deck, which was definitely the focal point of this uh, thing. And, well, all the new mechanics that I have installed for you to enjoy new things of art zone. I say I thank you for watching, and remember, great peril yields great beauty. <laughs>